Well, hey everybody, this is Max from MaxDanceOfPhotography.com. Uh, this is a tutorial on uh, for beginners on Lightroom. Uh, you can find these tutorials on my blog uh, as they come out. This will be uh, a few weeks and going on, and uh, but you can find everything on my blog, which is located on my website at MaxDanceOfPhotography.com. So let's go to Lightroom. Bang, we're in Lightroom. What is Lightroom? Uh, for uh, folks that don't know, Lightroom is an organizational tool. You can organize, organize your uh, photos, you can rate your photos, you can uh, cull them out, uh, you can send them to social media like uh, Flickr, uh, Facebook, or your website, wherever you want to do with them. You can export them out as JPEGs, you can print from Photoshop, uh, for, uh, from Lightroom, so you can do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, it is non-destructive editing. Uh, I do 90% of all my editing, if not more than 90%, probably 95, uh, of all my editing in Lightroom. This is where I start every photograph that I take. It starts in Lightroom. I might have to go to Photoshop to do something a little bit different, and then I'll bring it back to Lightroom. But Lightroom is where I do all, all of my heavy work at. Uh, it's non-destructive. It does not harm your photographs. It does not change your photographs. What it does is it, it writes a set of, this is what I did to it, and it shows it up on the screen so you, you can see what you've done, but it doesn't harm your photograph at all. Some of the old programs we used to use, we actually made two copies of every photograph, and we saved one in case we messed the other one up doing our editing because we couldn't go back to it. This is not, it has a reset button. You can go right back and start from scratch again, or you can go back in time two or three steps and, and, and start all over from there. Uh, it has many modules on it. We're going to do one module at a time, uh, but it has a library module. That's where your library is. It has a develop, a map, a book, a side show, print, and a web module. And we're going to go through all of those, probably take a, a uh, different tutorial on each, each one of those, and we'll work our way through. But the first thing we need to do is get photos into Lightroom. And how do we do that? Uh, well, first we uh, take our camera and hook it up to our computer or take our SD card or our CF card and plug it into our computer, just like we uh, normally would, whatever software you were using in the past, and uh, put in our, our cards. And by default, when you stick your card in, Lightroom will go right to it and start the import. If it doesn't, down here in the bottom left-hand corner in the library module, you can go import. And right here you can see our source. This is our camera, the Nikon D7000. And it's here and we dig down through all those little silly folders that they make when you, when you take pictures with your camera. And here goes some pictures I've loaded onto a uh, SD card. So as you can see up here, it has an SD card and it's from my Nikon D7000. That's what the uh, SD card was labeled as. Uh, so this is where the from is is at on, on your computer. Now you can, you know, if you wanted to bring other stuff into Lightroom, maybe you have a, uh, a mobile uh, flash drive, mobile drive, or uh, maybe even your hard drive on your computer, maybe you want to bring something into Lightroom to work on it, uh, you could do that here also. You can go right in and, and pick a, a photograph and bring that in. But today we're going to use the SD card because that's usually what we do. Uh, then Lightroom is going to ask you, how do you want to bring it in? Uh, do you want to just copy it from one place to another? Uh, I have did this for years and it works great. It, it'll take all your files and you notice here they all are. And they're labeled like they were, like they came out of my camera, NEFs. These are the raw files for Nikons. And I have some ARWs, which are the raw files for Sony. And they, they come out of the, uh, this is the way they come out of the camera. So I can copy them and just bring them right into Lightroom. Lightroom likes that and you can do whatever you need to. Now I said, now uh, Lightroom is non-destructive. And what Lightroom does is it, it simulates everything that's going to happen to your photograph and puts it up on the screen and all those simulations are in a little file. If you bring in just the NEFs, 
there'll be a little sidecar, a little uh, a little file that's attached to this file with all your corrections. Uh, that works great, uh, but you can also copy as DNG. What is DNG? DNG is a digital negative. Uh, all of these raw files that come from the different companies with the NEFs, the ARWs, or uh, Canons, uh, you know, all of those, those are all proprietary files. Lightroom can handle all those proprietary files, but, and it makes that little sidecar file on, onto the side of them, like I told you before. Well, if you bring them in as a DNG, as a digital negative, uh, that's a non proprietary raw file, and all of the corrections are actually in the DNG. Uh, that helps me from, you know, I, and I actually like that. Uh, Adobe is the one that came up with the DNG format. So, you know, I think Lightroom will work a little bit quicker and, and do its stuff quicker in a DNG. I, I haven't timed it. I don't think it, it's a whole lot quicker. But to me, the DNG is great. If I'm sending a, a photograph to a publisher or something, I can send it as a DNG. They can look at it and they can see all the changes I've made in it. And then they can adjust and, and do whatever they need to do. So anyway, if you want to just bring them in as, as a regular copy, that's fine. Or a copy as a DNG, that's good too. Uh, and where are we going to take them to? Well, we're going to take them to our hard drive in my computer. But if you click on here, uh, let's see. Let's go. Yeah, we can bring it into here. Let me get started here. Let me get all, all these kind of closed up. Okay, file handling. File handling. What are we going to do with these? Well, with the new uh, Photoshop CC, you can, uh, you can take it to your mobile devices like your iPad or any kind of pad, and uh, you can build smart previews. And smart previews is a simulation of this. It's a smaller... Uh, but you can edit and do all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see. You can make a second copy to another drive if you wanted to. Maybe you had an external drive, and this is where you would make a backup copy. So you would send one to your hard drive and one to an external drive, and you could go and copy. Or you could add this to a collection. Now, we're going to go over collections a little bit later, but that's what you could do. So... Uh, that's file handling, and I usually do minimal. I don't. This is not where I send stuff to different drives. Uh, I don't use a smart previewer, uh, so I usually leave mine on minimal, and that's about it. File renaming. If, for example, you did a photo shoot for a wedding and the Smiths' wedding, if you wanted to rename all those to Smith Wedding and have them number it one, two, three, four, five. You know, through the whole gamut of a thousand pictures, you could do that, and that would be a way you could separate stuff. I usually do not do this. Uh, I'll rename the file at the end. Uh, apply during import. Now, you can have Lightroom do certain corrections to your photographs as they come in, and you can create develop settings. And I have, you have, uh, you can make them black and white. You can do, these are Lightroom preset stuff. Uh, you can come and find user presets that you can create, and we're going to create some later on. Uh, but I've got an import preset that I always use. Uh, metadata. This is also where you can uh, add metadata to your photographs. Now, metadata is information that's embedded into the photograph. No matter where it goes, it has this information on it. And... I have a default that I use, but uh, here we're going to uh, edit, and this is what it looks like. Uh, so let, let's look at my custom. This is my default. Uh, so it'll come in with basic camera information, uh, basic info. You, you can put stuff in here. Uh, copyright. I put my copyright on all my photographs. Say it's copyrighted with the year. Uh, my copyright, this is my website. Uh, I have my name, Goldsboro, NC. Uh, my email address, if anybody gets a hold of the photograph. Let's see, what else? Uh, keywords. I actually add these keywords upon import. Uh, 
my name and where I'm from. And wherever out on, if these get out on the web, wherever they're out on the web, that helps for uh, uh, SIO, uh, the, you know, how, how Google and stuff brings your stuff up. Because if somebody is searching you, you want your name to come to the top. So the more you put your name out there on the photographs and stuff, the more it'll pop up when you put your name out there. So this is basically for that. But you have all these things you can put on import, but that's usually the only things that I actually put. Uh, you could come in here at import and, and do a lot of other stuff. So I'm just going to hit done. Uh, keywords. Keywording is important. Uh, Lightroom is an organizational tool. So you could put in here uh, keywords like, uh, I'm just looking at the photographs, I could put bear, I could put swans, I could put uh, seashore on this one. And when you type that stuff in, all these will be labeled that. Now, if you were doing one shoot, you know, like maybe, oh, I don't know, all these were at the beach, these three right here were at the beach, then I could have beach, I could have uh, what beach it actually was, pier. I could have that. And so when I get into my library module, if I wanted to look up all the photographs that had peers in it, I could type in peer and boom, all the photographs that I have peers in it will pop up. So this is an important, important part. Uh, you can apply those during the import or you can do them later on. You don't have to do them at the import. Uh, destination. Where are we going to send this to? What is the folder or place on our hard drive that we're going to send them to? And by default, it organizes by date, and this is the date format. Now, you can change the date format to all these different kinds, but this is the way it comes, default, and that's the way I usually use it. But if you wanted to put them into subfolders when you brought them in, you could name, you could click that and type in the subfolder, or maybe this is your D800 shots, or this is your Canon 5D Mark III shots, however you want to do it. Uh, you know, sunset, sunrises. But you, you could bring them into folders that way. I usually do not do that at this point. I usually just bring them in as the defaults. Okay. All right. So now let's get to looking at our photographs here. So we've got all this stuff set up, where it's coming to, where it's going, where it's coming from, where it's going to. I'm going to bring these in as DNGs. And, uh, if you look at these photographs, they all have check marks on. All these check marks. So uh, here is the first place that I start my culling process, where I start getting rid of photographs. Uh, you can't bring everything onto your hard drive that you took. If I went out there and took 500 pictures of the sunset, uh, you know, I'm only going to use three or four of those of a, of a sunset. If I took five hundred of them, that's the space that I'm taking up on my computer. It's just going to drag down, slow up my computer. So this is the first place that I start calling. So here we go. I've got three photographs here that are pretty much the same. I can look in here. I can I can make these bigger. And, uh, you know, I can, I can go through these. I'm hitting my right button. Just kind of bring me through them. Oh, there goes a bear. I'm going to... Uh, double click on it again and bring it back out. So out of these three photos that are kind of alike, maybe I only want to bring two of them in. Let's, uh, I got a bird coming in on this one. I kind of like that. Let's get rid of this one and we'll save that. So uh, I, don't, I don't need that one. Now I've got four bear pictures here. Now I like the ones with the faces looking at me. So let's get rid of that one. His face ain't looking at me. Oh, there's two more. Let's uh, let's get rid of this one, and we'll save that one. Here I've got birds in flight. Uh, you know, I don't need all these pictures. Let's get rid of a couple. Uh, here I've got some uh, birds flying across uh, the moon here. I can get rid of some of these. Let's get rid of... Uh, let's get rid of those. Don't need those. Uh, let's see. And let's just leave it at that. So we've we've already culled down from wherever we were things we're going, weren't going to bring in. 
Now, sometimes I, I hit shots. I take pictures of the ground or inside my camera bag. The camera go click, 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 click. Or, you know, this is where you get rid of all those. All those blank ones and everything, this is where you get rid of them. All right. So now we've brought all those in. Now we can, uh, we can import them. And importing them is a simple process of hitting the import button. So I'm going to hit the import button, and it's going to bring everything over. You'll notice I have a progress bar up in the top left-hand corner. We're now in the library module. So Lightroom is bringing all these in. All the ones we had checked, it's bringing them in. Applying whatever presets I had. I had a couple of presets that I had set up, so it's, it's bringing those in. And boom, now it's got them all in. It's converting them into DNGs, because that's the way I like to do my photographs. I do everything in DNG. So they're bringing them in. It'll take a little bit. It takes a little bit longer to, to convert them into DNGs. If I was just copying them over, that happens a little bit quicker. Converting them to DNG takes a little bit of time. And that's why it's important to cull your photographs before you bring them in. So we're bringing them in. Now these were different dates on all these because uh, I, I, I went and then grabbed some and, and put them on an SD card so I'd have some different type of photographs on one card. And uh, if you notice, it, when it gets through, we'll have a whole bunch of folders on the left because each photograph that was taken at a different date, it, it kind of moved it around. So we'll look at some of these as soon as it gets finished. All right, we're almost done. Bring them in. All right, and we have 24 photos were converted into DNG. And I'm just going to click on the OK. So here we go. We have our, uh, we, we're in our library. And we have our folder here. These are the ones we just imported in. We imported 24 of them into our catalog. So here we are. We've got these. If I click on one, I can look at some of the uh, metadata. You can see Goldsboro. Max Dancel Photography. That will be on all the photographs because that was put in there prior to. And so here we go. We've got them all in. Uh, you can notice it organized them by date. So if I click over, oh, that's not one. Let's see. There's nine photographs I took on that day. Six photographs I took on that day. Five photographs I took on that day. And four photographs I took on that day. Now, normally when you're out shooting, you'll have all the same day or whatever. But these were all different days. So uh, that's how I organize them because that's the way we told them to do it, by day. So there they are. And uh, so now we've brought them all in. So that's how you get your photographs into Lightroom, importing them. Now, our next topic will be the library module. And we'll do that in just a little bit. So from maxdancephotography.com, keep shooting. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.